Watching our heads as we go. Uh, of course, back in the day, this started going, getting known less for the uh, what's it called, the sassafras trees on the corners, and more for the fact that back before the yahoos in town had dirt bikes to take up and down other people's driveways at God knows when o'clock in the morning, they would instead race their horses up and down this street, right past Patty's Bar there, with such regularity that even the city government started referring to them as the race streets. And so it was. Race Street it became, and Race Street it's been ever since. Up ahead we've got a great view of the Ben Franklin Bridge there, folks. Named after, of course, Ben Franklin, because we've got one of everything named after Ben Franklin. we got a bridge, we got a park, we got a road, we got a museum, and probably a few other things I'm all already forgetting. One of everything after Franklin who is involved in everything. Ben Franklin here is one of several bridges links us across the Delaware River to Camden, New Jersey. If you wanted to cross that bridge, you actually have a couple of options. You could drive across, of course, if you feel like pay paying a toll on the way back. You could ride across on the transit if you feel like paying a train ticket. Or, if you feel like getting your cardio in for the week, you can walk across on the pedestrian span. And walk out of Tunic, because that's about a mile. As we're going by, of course, passing the carriage here. On the left, we've got the old Fireman's Hall Museum, where one can go to learn about the history of firefighting in this country when they're open. And up ahead on the left, we've got the El gap in the buildings there of Alfred's Alley. Alfred's Alley, the oldest continuously occupied street in the nation's history. You look down that, that's pretty much exactly what it looks like all the way back to the revolution. You know, give or take a couple of anachronistic flags and the occasional parked truck. That marks as being very solidly in the Old City section of town. Old City, right next to the river, because that's where the whole city started up at, right on the riverfront. We didn't build up all at once. We started on the east side and gradually pushed westward as time went on. That's why all the historic stuff is on this side of City Hall and all the skyscrapers are on the other side of it. Now watching our heads on the right as we come past this tree. Sometimes it uh, cuts a little close. Trixie branches. Now just double check. We're coming up now on Betsy Ross's house, folks. Anybody upstairs want to get off at Betsy's house? Show of hands. No? All right. Nobody upstairs wants off for Betsy Ross. Which is going to be coming up on the right just past this moving van. As here it is, folks, Betsy's house, the woman who made the first well-known flag of the country, the 13 stars in a circle flag. And I say most, uh, the first well-known flag, there, of course, were others already in use back when, uh, before she made her flag, but hers was the one that got the most widely known and the most widely recognized. And therefore, that's why it's the one that all of us learned about in grade school. Plenty of seats upstairs. Anybody joining us? No? Nobody's leaving? Nobody's getting on? All right. Now, uh, a little bit of something spooky here, folks. If you notice the stone slab? Of, oh, now we got some folks coming up. It's all right. It's all right. All right. Just making our way to our seats. Now, if you uh, notice a stone slab among the trees to the left of the square there, this isn't just where she lived, folks. This is also where she lies to this day. Ooh. Yes, the whole property was hers. That's the sort of thing when you're a woman of the colonial era who has multiple husbands in a row. And especially what happens when a distinctly non-zero number of those husbands are pirates. But I'll let you learn about that when you go take the tour for yourselves down through the house. Over on the left, we've got the 
old Quaker meeting house folks where the Quakers would discuss the matters of the day. And coming up on the right between these trees, we have a big old bust of Ben Franklin you're going to want a photo of. There it is going by on the right here, folks, right here at the fire station. And if you notice, it's got a bit of a strange texture there. That statue does. It is made of donated keys and pennies. Keys, of course, for the famous key in the kite lightning experiment of Ben Franklin. And pennies for his old phrase, a penny saved is a penny earned. Which, speaking of pennies, we're back here at the Mint, which means Franklin's grave is coming up on the left at the corner. I may be able to see it through a section of fencing there in the wall. And it's not just him buried there, it's him, his wife, his daughter, one of his sons. Not the other one, though, because the, the other one sided with the English, so he was elsewhere at the time of his passing. And you notice there's some brown specks on that grave pretty much every day. People like leave pennies there for luck. Again, because of that old phrase of his, penny saved, penny earned. Imagine being so clever, you're still making money 200 years after you're dead. And speaking of 200 years later, over on the left, uh, right, we've got the Constitution Center here, folks. Great place to go learn about that foundational document of our country. As well as the amendments made to it over the years, what is and is not covered by its uh, dictates, and the people who made it what it was. You can even get your own little copy of the Constitution, which I feel like that would have saved Nick Cage a lot of effort that one time. We've got plenty of room upstairs, folks. Uh, just come on up if you want to take a seat. We've got a whole block of seats available in the back. All right, making our ways to our seats, folks. I very much appreciate you letting me know uh, what stop you're getting off at right as you're getting on. That makes my job a lot easier. So that's several folks getting off for a running market, and we're all seated, ready to go. Watch your head on these branches, folks. Incidentally, I don't mind people reaching up to touch the, the leaves as we go around, but please do not grab them. You might accidentally pull a branch down on your head or someone else's car. Learn from my mistakes. Over here on the right ahead of us, we have this big old pink building here. The Federal Reserve in Philadelphia. The building is uh, occasionally open for tours these days. What it is, you're actually able to take a nice tour through the whole set, uh, site, see the entire process of taking old money out of circulation. And if you take that tour, you'll actually get a nice little souvenir of your own at the end of it. That'll be a nice little baggie full of $100. Shredded. It's always something with the feds, ain't it? Still, nice tour. Learn a bit about money and inflation and how economic systems is work and all that jazz. And uh, right across the street on the right, we've got the African American Museum in Philadelphia. Great museum there to learn a different perspective on history. Permanent art exhibit out front. 13 silent bells suspended from that structure. Symbolic, of course, of the silent struggle of African Americans in our country from today all the way back to the 13 colonies. That's the number. And next door to that, a parking lot. And over on the left, another parking lot. This one much prettier. It's built after they passed the law saying if you use public money for your construction, you have to put part of that money, I believe about 15%, towards public beautification. Which, uh, honestly, I think succeeded. No matter the time of day, it always catches the light. Uh, very nicely to me. And just on the note of public beautification, folks, in your time throughout our town, do keep your eyes open, not just on the tour, but the whole way through. Philadelphia is sometimes called the largest open-air art gallery because of the sheer number of murals and statues throughout town for the public viewing and appreciation. As we're going along, folks, over on the right, we've got, yes, another parking lot. Who says you can't park in town? This one with four Chinese bronze dragons out front. I know they're Chinese, number of claws. Four claws, Chinese. East Asian countries. But of course, that marks our entrance to Philadelphia's Chinatown. 
which at seven city blocks is the second largest Chinatown in the United States. Second only two, of course, San Francisco's over on the West Coast. And of course, uh, Philadelphia's Chinatown did start at around the same time, back during the railroad boom, uh, with uh, many Asian American immigrants uh, choosing to, rather than start their lives in a new world, over on the West Coast where they arrived, to instead make their way to the East Coast and start their lives here in town. Of course, it's not just Chinese Americans here in Philadelphia. We've got uh, persons from all manner of Asian American, uh, Asian countries, Japanese, Chinese, Korean, Vietnamese, South Pacific Islanders, and probably a few others I've forgotten. And homes, businesses, offices, and restaurants of all, plus at least one uh, French baguette shop. It seems weird, but I'm given to understand it's actually a very popular chain in Korea. Now, uh, folks, you're going to want to get your cameras ready, and you're going to point them to the right for the Chinatown Friendship Gate coming by on the right at the cross street. Beautiful sight, isn't it? That's what they call a freestanding structure, by the way. Which, if you're not familiar with that term, that means there's nothing holding that thing together. No pins, nails, screws, staples, tape, gum, nothing but the pure craftsmanship with which each piece is made holds the various parts together. Which is really impressive to me because I can't make a Jenga tower come more than a couple of inches. Yeah, there's a reason I didn't take uh, engineering classes. Uh, this area of town also used to have the uh, renowned Trocadero Theater in it up until a few years back when they finally had to close it for mismanagement, basically. Now that place had a wide and varied clientele. My family, we always do it for the rock and roll st shows. Over on the right, we've got the Pennsylvania Convention Center here, folks. First built back in 93 for the Democratic National Convention. And it was later expanded for the Republican National Convention. And then it was later expanded for the Democratic National Convention. And back and forth 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 and back and forth. Until at this point, it's the size of three football fields inside and they physically cannot make it larger without completely rebuilding it in order to allow it to go up instead of out. Yeah, it starts at that uh, street we just crossed, and it goes on to the next one, and the one after that, and the one after that. Four city blocks, from 11th to 14th. Honestly, it's rather ludicrous. But hey, great space, a lot of different things can happen there at once. The home show, the much renowned flower show, the auto show, the boat show. Me personally, I'm partial when Comic Con and other such things come through. I'm a giant nerd. Uh, Wizard Comic Con, the uh, uh, D I believe Dragon Con might come through there. Pax Unplugged, that's a fun one. Tabletop role playing games, and spe uh, especially. Of course, the bridge we just passed under was not originally part of its expansions. Originally, the bridge was part of the building over to the left with the yellow brick here. The Reading Terminal Market, or rather, the Reading Railroad Terminal, specifically. See, back when the Reading Railroad wanted to build their terminal in town, they wanted to put it right here on the site of an open-air farmer's market. And we said, you cannot do that. You must leave somewhere, if you want to build here, you must leave somewhere for the farmers to continue meeting at. And they decided that the best way to do that was to build a market on the first floor, an entire train terminal on the second, and a two-story series of train bridges out through the north half of Center City to get the trains at the right height. As you might expect, the Reading Railroad is not a meaningfully independent entity anymore. Most of the train bridges are uh, defunct and either demolished, used as cultivated elevated gardens, or just farrow green space, two stories in the air. But the Reading Terminal Market is still going strong. Some 30 odd different restaurants, shops, businesses, bars, and other such sites in there. Great food wherever you go. I will caution you though that it is clear uh, they are going to start closing up shops very, very soon. The market itself closes fully at 6 o'clock. Most of the shops inside are already shut by the time that happens. 
coming over to stop number five here, folks. Uh, hold on until we come to a complete stop, please. All right, that's our stop, folks. For everybody's departing from our bus now. You can have a seat off of the bus at your own pace. If you're feeling generous, we have a tip jar by the door. If you have any trash, there's a trash can outside. Thank you, sir. Trash can, uh, tip jar downstairs by the door, please, sir. Oh, okay. Appreciate it, but you know, we gotta keep it all even and split it with the law. Okay. That only helps if you know what, uh, where you are at all times. And that was somewhat complicated in a time when almost nobody knew how to read. So they had to get very clever with the street signs and the street names. As such, all the cross streets, like the ones we've been driving past here, are numbered instead of names. The lower the number, the further east you are. You cross the yard to the Delaware River, Canada, New Jersey, the Atlantic Ocean, whatever your preferred marker for east is in this part of the country. And, uh, of course, that was because people didn't know how to read, but they knew how to count. After all, that's how you know you're getting paid, right? Please watch your head for any tree branches that come by. I'll give warning as best I can, but you know, I'm human, I'm flawed, I'm gonna miss one eventually. So please, duck as you feel appropriate, in addition to when I give warning. We'll all come through this much more safely. Rule number two. It's a bus, it's big, it's heavy, it bounces when it hits a pothole. Please remain seated at all times. After all, folks, it's only funny if I fall over and get hurt. And thirdly, as we go around, if there's anywhere you want to get off this bus at, if there's any stops you wish to depart at, let me know before we get there, please. So I have time to uh, holler down to our driver, Mr. William, let him know where he needs to get off of, uh, get this bus off of the traffic and onto the curb so that people can get where they need to go. With that said, show of hands, who here is not going all the way around to the end of the tour? Where are you getting off, sir? Well, as soon as you know, let me know. Yes, <laughs> we'll have to come around. Yeah, we had where we began. Yeah. Over on the right, folks, as we're going around, thinking about our stops, we've got the mint here. United States Mint, started by Justin, Mr. Frank, Frank himself. He was involved in everything, folks. Frank, of course, started the mint because, well, we had just started the revolution and it's rather a liability to still be on the money of the country you're actively rebelling against, so we had to start making our own. Still makes a solid amount of the coin used in America to this day. Not all of it, of course, but quite a bit. Now we're turning on to a street that is today known as Race Street. However, that wasn't always its name. Originally, this was Sassafras Street. That's fun to say, isn't it? Sisyphus. I don't know, that is of course the name of a tree, specifically the tree we get root beer from, but the fact that it was a plant was actually very important. See, the street grid we're driving around on dates all the way back to the 1680s under our founder, William Penn himself. Now he set out this street water ice. If you want a good water ice and a soft pretzel, Philadelphia is one of the better places to go for it. Good in the summer. Nowadays, it'll still be okay, just, you know, might not be the best for the temperature. Our double decker bus is going to be in Philadelphia. Philadelphia is a hot dog. There are several foods that you should always eat in Philadelphia. Those are, of course, the cheesesteak, the soft pretzel and the water ice, and the tasty cakes. It's a local pastry. They let uh, one of the staples of that is the individual pies I recommend. And finally, Scrapple. Yes ma'am, Scrapple, the breakfast meat invented by the Amish. Where they take, uh, well it's what it sounds like, you know? They take the scrap of the pig, press it together in breakfast. Scrapple and eggs, that's a good one. Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, 
Well, Coming ahead, of course, we got the High Black Cafe there. They have decent enough food, I guess, there. And, of course, some great rock and roll memorabilia. John Guide, I'm going to tell you this. Although I have heard, I haven't been able to double check it yet, but I've heard that the Dubai guitar has gotten knocked over by neighboring construction recently, and they haven't been able to pick it back up yet. You might wonder, though, what is the hard rock doing in Philadelphia? What is Philadelphia's link to rock and roll history? Well, folks, it is, in fact, directly in front of us. This intersection was the original site of a little show that would move west, change its name slightly, and become known as American Bandstand. Very important show in the popularization of rock and roll in America. Of course, when it started out here, it was just bandstand. It didn't get big until it went west, but started off right here with basically the same uh, mission statement when it began. Anyway, and they recoil in terror, like a, like a vampire from a crucifix. Folks, you're thinking of New York subway when you have that reaction. Ours is very simple. It's one straight line this way and one straight line this way. And of course, coming down Market Street here, up ahead, Philadelphia City Hall. Beautiful, isn't it? That is what they call a masonry building. And if you're not familiar with that term, that means there's something holding that thing up. No steel girders behind the walls, no wooden beams under the floorboards. There is only stone and mortar. And of course, some 250 different sculptures and carvings all over the surface. All of which were done by the same guy, which can kind of helps explain why it took 30 years to build. He's like a street preacher out there, having his, uh, having his words. Up top of City Hall, of course, the tallest statue up there, Mr. William Penn himself, our colonial founder. An English Quaker who was given this colony as settlement of a debt between the, that the king of England himself owed to the man's father. One wonders what kind of debt that was, that a land area roughly the size of the entirety of England was just squaring that debt. Yes, the Isle of England, roughly the same land area as the entirety of Pennsylvania. Of course, as we're going around here, uh, City Hall, a lovely functioning government building. Beautiful, not just in the tourist areas, but also in the functional areas which I can personally attest to because I've actually done jury duty there multiple times. And over on the right here, we've got the Masonic Temple, the meeting house of the Brotherhood of Freemasons. Yes, the conspiracy theory ones. Uh, what I'm going to say is, I've been around the building, I haven't noticed anything too spooky so far. Up on the right, we've got the Love Park statue there. Currently got a very nice market going on today at both Love and Dilworth Parks. Remind me folks, show hands upstairs. Anybody getting off at Love Park? Nobody upstairs. Remember folks, if you're downstairs and you want to get off at Love Park, make some noise so that our driver, Mr. William, can hear you. From past Pennsylvania Railroad Suburban Station folks. So most of our trains meet up at underground. You might think to yourself, wait, hang on a second. Pennsylvania Railroad. We were just at the Reading Railroad. Why am I having these flashbacks to thrown cars? What tables? Yes, Monopoly designed to be miserable. Turn it on to Ben Franklin Parkway here, folks. various nations in the world, nations that specifically have a population presence here in our town. Coming up on stop number seven, folks. Anybody up top coming up for stop number seven? I'm not seeing anyone upstairs for stop number seven. Sorry, folks, that one doesn't get plowed too often. But yes, over on the right, Cathedral of Silk, etc., etc., etc. And if that name is just a bunch of gibberish to you, 
head Catholic church of the area. Me, I went to Catholic high school about five blocks from here, so for me it was just that place we go to Mass for Christmas and Easter break. But those are the ones higher up in that lower level of green roof that the turret is attached to. The lower one there. See, back in the day when this was first built, there was strong anti-Catholic sentiment in the nation. Hard to believe, but true. So, the only windows on the building were built too high to throw a rock through. But how do you know how high that is to work for it? Well, folks, you hold a rock throwing competition. How else? Where are those the highest rock winds? And then you vote four feet above that. Just given generic names, center square, northeast, southwest, etc. But eventually, well, the center square park was taken over for use as the site of our city hall, and the others became known as Logan, Franklin, Rittenhouse, and Washington squares. The four largest uh, existing parks in Center City. Over on the right, we've got the central branch of the Free Library of Philadelphia, which was started by, you guessed it, Benny Franklin. He's everywhere. Speaking of everywhere, over on the left, we'll be coming back to this later, but that's the Franklin Institute over there, folks. Much beloved scientific museum, near and dear to the hearts of all the students in town. Uh, give you a sense of the sort of thing they have in there. They actually have an original Wright Brothers plane in storage there, or on display, I should say, watching our heads on the right. Of course, uh, that plane actually used to belong to a local guy around 1915 or so, Mr. Bergdahl, his name was. And he actually used to get in trouble with that plane. As we're coming along, folks, up ahead on the right, we're going to be passing in a minute, the Rodin Museum. You may not know the name, Auguste Rodin, off the top of your head, but I guarantee you know at least one of his works, if you think about it. Lovely ceremony happening out there, looks like. Yes, out there, folks, the thinker out front. Congratulations! Hey, congratulations! Lovely sight, folks, getting their photos done. Very popular, that is. People getting their photos done for. Uh, weddings outside the uh, Rodin Museum. And a museum by the beer. That's the thinker, folks. Anybody want off by the bus for the thinker? Nobody upstairs coming down to the thinker, but nobody upstairs. Because they are, in fact, a special depiction of Dante's Inferno. Nine circles of hell, in which all present, thinker included, are in eternal ironic punishment for their sins in life. If you're wondering, the thinker was too dour and pondersome in life, so now he's stuck that way forever. Dante taking something of a, well, smoke a whole carton of contemplation sort of path to his punishments. Building got an equal amount of sunlight throughout the day for gardening with. Worked out very well, really. All the way right up until some dude built this other thing next to it and got off all the morning light. Jerk. Still, it's a great place. If you need, here's a hint. I see dead people. Yes, yeah, Six Sense. Starring Bruce Willis. Directed by M. Night Shyamalan. Who is originally from just outside of Philadelphia. Yeah, he's from like 20 or 40 minutes that way. Uh, the house was once the Bergdahl Mansion, belonging to the Bergdahl Brewing family. Very rich folks. Uh, we actually have the plane that belonged to the young man of the family because his big idea for dodging the draft in World War One was hide in my house, hope no one looks for me. Which actually lasted two years, so don't knock it, I guess. Until somebody noticed him, at which point the plan then changed to evade my captors, flee. This knife in the Caesar, was he? 
five. Here we are at the head of us on the main entrance of Eastern State Penitentiary. And we're going to be coming around to a stop to let a whole bunch of folks off for that in just a moment. Yes, go to jail, do not collect your hundred dollars. Eastern State right here. However, despite what the Monopoly board would conflate it as, the Quakers who came up with the idea for the penitentiary, they Now the idea for how that would be encouraged was that, in, in theory at least, each inmate would be given enough time on his own to contemplate their God's will and thereby come to the path of goodness. Went stark raving banana bread. It's actually considered to be a very haunted site to this day. Uh, that's why normally in the autumn, all the theater kids in town go work there, turn it into the largest haunted house in the tri-state area. It eventually stop with the Quaker system, move to the marginally better U.S. jails method, and that's the system under which served one Mr. Alphonse Capone. Yes, Al Capone, famed gangster, did about eight months here in Philly, yeah, during which time he got very special treatment, serving his time for tax evasion. It always comes back to tax dodging. Over on the right, we of course have the main building of the Philadelphia Museum of Arts among the trees there. In front of the building overlooking beautiful Fairmount Park Statuary Garden and the lovely Scuba River waterfront. Which, in case you're wondering how the hell you're supposed to pronounce that river on the left end of your maps, Schuylkill. Not Shuelikill or whatever it looks like it should say. Schuylkill. Now remind me folks, we've got some folks getting off at the museum, right, from back steps. Yes, no, yes, show of hands. Remember, if you're downstairs, you got to let uh, Mr. William know yourselves, because I can't hear you from up here. Over on the left, we got this glint of gold here, the Joni on the Pony, made of Orleans, Joan of Arc. To answer your first question, no, it's not real gold. If it was, I wouldn't be here right now. Neither would it. To answer second question, what's a French peasant doing in a former English colony? Well, of course, uh, to cover the history first, Joan of Arc was a peasant in the French medieval era during one of France and England's wars. She received a vision from God telling her to fight against the English in his name. And she told the king this, and the king said, eh, sure, why not? Because, you see, his entire army was trapped under siege by the English, so he didn't really have any better options. Yeah. Eat him! Yeah, she didn't have strategy. She was a peasant. What a French person is doing in an English colony. To get back to that, well... The short version is, us and France have been good buddies ever since they helped us win the revolution and we helped them give England a good kick in the pants. But if that's a, all a bit dry for you folks, why do you hear that? I think I do. Da, da. There he is folks on the right of us, Rocky Balboa. Now is that, just to double check, anybody on this bus getting off for Rocky? Yeah, we got a couple of folks in the back row getting off the bus for Rocky, so we're going to be pulling over, letting a couple people off, getting a couple people on. Now I'm assuming your first question about Rocky is, ain't he supposed to be at the top of the steps? Well, he was. But the museum never liked him up there. The museum was of the opinion that it's not art, it's movie memorabilia. Which, uh, yeah, that's a bunch of baloney, folks. It communicates a message or idea. It elicits an emotional response. It is art. The end. Period. 
Take it from me, folks. I'm an old art student. We studied this stuff. But it is, of course, pop art. And the museum is run by a bunch of elitist jerks. So they decided that that doesn't count. They moved him 80 yards to the public property of the city sidewalk, where he stands to this day and where the museum can't complain anymore. Still got a couple of folks get waiting to get off once we get the parking spot to do so. If only these ice cream trucks would stop stealing our designated spots, huh? Getting you pulling up, getting a couple of people on board, gonna get a couple of people off board. Oh. As you're going along, folks, a uh, little bit of a fun fact for you. So, I said earlier that the front of the museum overlooks a waterfront, and there's nothing out here but a couple of fountains ain't even turned on. Well, I'll lay it out for you folks. I'm not lying, but neither are your eyes. See, the thing of it is, is that the famous rocky steps back there, the ones that are known throughout the world, the ones that bring in a solid amount of Philadelphia. And of course, as we're going along, Eakins all over here, folks. The statue of man and a horse in the middle there. Technically, George Washington. Sort of. So, you know, hold on to folks starting right here in my head, this is. Uh, so the big mission make that statue of George Washington. Well, he did get the hit done. He got it in that much, but, um... Look, you know how it goes. You know, behind, they tie it up. Thing, you know, you, you get a little burned out. You can pass it a little. Sure, he does it, right? Well, suddenly our man is staring down the guy on the duty. He needs to have a statue of a man on a horse, and he has a head. So he does what any good artist would do, folks. He panics and improvises. It throws George Washington's head onto a spare cast of the completed horse and body of King Frederick the Great of Germany. Which is what stands there. Honestly, I'm not too big on the birds, folks, but my mom is such a fan. And she actually uh, got a... Uh, well, to start off with, folks, just a bit of context, my mom is not a fan of the subway. And she's also not really a fan of walking either. For that parade, folks, my mom took a bus to the subway and walked eight blocks to get a uh, view of it from right over there. Yeah, that's what happens for. Honestly, it was probably her highlight of the decade. And keep in mind, that's also the same decade that the Pope showed up in town, too. Over on the right, we got the... Over on the right, yes, the Franklin Institute, folks. Near and dear to all the students in town. All of us have been there at least once, and we all think of the same exhibit first when we think back on the Franklin. It's not that guy's plane. It's not the giant train. It's not the Phil's Planetarium or the IMAX Theater or anything like that. No. The thing we all think of first, folks, is the heart. You see, within these limestone walls stands a 20-foot-tall statue of the human heart. Through which you walk, following the path of your own blood. It's not something you forget when you first encounter it under the age of 10. It's not scary, I'll say that much. It's still appropriate for the little ones, but it's going to stick with you, folks. As we're going along, up ahead on the right, we've got the Church of St. Clement there. And if you're one of the pain, well, folks, if you look to the left of the bus, and then look up, and then look up some more, and then look up above that, you'll see the towering structure of Comcast 2. Tallest building in Philadelphia. It's supposed to look like a cell phone with its antenna up. In the old 80s, 90s style. One might argue that from this angle, it could be said to instead resemble a certain gesture you might associate with Comcast. <laughs> One wonders if the architect did that on purpose. 
one further as long as if they were a customer. On the right trains go Amtrak and the like. As we're going ahead, we're going to be turning on to Market Street here, folks. But if one instead kept going straight and a few blocks, then went to the right, you'd come to the Mother Museum. Or as we call it, the Museum of Medical Oddities. All I'm going to say about that is the, the sideshow never truly left America, and I wouldn't attend on a full stomach. As we're turning now, folks, we're going past another much beloved Philadelphia institution. The Wawa. It's a convenience store. It's like 7-Eleven, but it's in one of the local Native American languages. If I had to bet money on it, I'd put it on the Iroquois, but there were several different na uh, Native American nations here and as part of the Haudenosaunee League. But, of course, you might wonder where they got that term from, because it doesn't sound like a lot of the other Native American terms in this tour. Well, folks, it's all very straightforward. I've just got to stop thinking about that and just marvel at the architecture. A little bit of a story for you folks as we're coming through this canyon back towards City Hall. So, Philadelphia City Hall used to actually be... City Hall, great photo op for it. If you want to get a photo of City Hall, you're going to have a good hot minute here to get that. Right, speaking of statues, you might look to the right and see this statue of two lovers in an embrace and a kiss. Or do you it might look like a clothespin? A pretty hole in the ground to let, sit, uh, to let people get up from the subways. But these days, of course, a much nicer area. Request for a couple people want to get off at stop number 20. Pennsylvania, established back in the 1860s in the aftermath of the Civil War, to try and preserve the Union of States. Time to stop 20 on the next block, folks. Now here is I Dennis DeYoung there once. He was a good guy. You know, the guy from Styx. Mr. Roboto, that guy. Now, as we're coming down Pine Street, folks, do kindly watch your heads if, in case there's any trees coming by. Also, do note that we will be taking a diversion on this route. We will be going uh, directly up 5th Street to the end of the tour from Pine Street. We will be bypassing stops 24, 25, 26, and 27. Rainbow f flag pattern on the 11th Street sign across the street from us to the right, right next to the red light. That indicates that we are currently passing through the area of town that we know affectionately as the Gaberhood. 
to have a high concentration of LGBT owned and LGBT friendly shops. Nice little stretch of town. Extends mostly back up to the left towards Market Street to the side of us. Nice area. As we're going along this stretch of town, uh, this stretch of Pine Street specifically, is known on the maps as Antiques Row. Named as such for the number of very old shops along the storefronts here. Nice park out there, isn't it? And just a little reminder, I'm the only one to stand up on this ride. Nice area, ain't it? Now we're going to be pulling up to the Borst building in just a moment. Our, this will actually be the next bus out since we're here now. Once we get up there, if anyone wishes to depart from the tour at this point, 